Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the difference between a live iBus signal and an S bus, compare some latencies, even though I've done these latencies before. However, we're also going to be covering future topics where we actually test the new access protocol if they fix the older S bus problems. So with that being said, let's get started. Huge shout out to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. And right now they're running a pretty massive promotion. If you're looking to get your PCBs done, such as for example, my open hardware flight controller or anything else, you can go ahead and check them out. I'll have links to them down below. So right now what we're looking at here is we're looking at both an iBus and a S bus signal live currently. This is the S bus right here and this is the I bus. Now you might be like, oh, this one looks inverted. Why isn't this one the S bus? Well, if you take a closer look here, it's going to be a little bit difficult to notice this. So one of these signals is inverted and it's the S bus right here. And this is the I bus, which is not inverted. And I'll make sense of that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the middle line right here to be zero volts so they can overlay each other and you can see how the signals actually look like. And I'll make more sense of this as we go along. So there we go, I set that on zero and I set that on zero. So right now this line is zero volts. Now if you take a closer look, the yellow one is S bus. S bus stays on zero and when it wants to send a command, it actually goes to five volts. So it goes like that. I bus is always on five volts and then when it wants to, you know, send a relay or a post or a command, it'll drop down to a uh, ground. It'll drop down to ground, basically. So for anything that speaks in terms of, you know, electronics, how they speak to each other, it's basically voltage and time. That's how they speak. So, oh, I'm at zero volts. I'm going to go up to five volts for one millisecond and then come back down. That means a number one. And then I'm going to stay on zero volts and I'm going to go up for two milliseconds to five volts, come back down. Then that means a two. That's pre-programmed in the software and all types of protocols. So that's how these stuff talk with each other. And that's how the receivers are currently talking to our, uh, our flight controllers, basically. Uh, so as you can tell, this is the IBUS, the purple is the IBUS, and it is not inverted. This is how a normal signal would talk. And the SBUS is the one inverted, even though logically speaking, this is the SBUS looks like a signal that would not be inverted. But in reality, it is the one that is inverted. And that's how we always have to uninvert it, especially on F4 uh, microcontroller units. The F7 could automatically detect if it's inverted or not inverted, and it'll do that stuff. Or it has a built-in inverter within the IC itself. That's how we really don't have to worry about that. So I just really wanted to get this out of the way. Also, I wanted to show you something that's really interesting that you might not have known about and uh, maybe someday in the future it might come across you and maybe not. So what I'm going to do now is gonna, I'm going to actually power off both of the receivers here. So right now they're both powered off and I'm going to turn off both of my RC transmitters here. So this could be useful for debugging purposes before we jump into the, you know, the timings of each packet and how everything's being sent. So right now, everything's off. So what I'm going to do is keep the transmitters turned off, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the receivers right now without the transmitters being on. So right like this right now, we have both receivers on. But as you can tell, there is nothing going on. This is a live video feed. So if the RC transmitter has never been connected since the receiver has booted, there will be no signals being outputted. And this is going to be very useful, especially if you have one of those toolkits that actually test S bus and stuff, uh, that you need to know this so you don't get scared and think your receiver's broken and it's just merely you didn't bind it correctly. So keep that in mind. That's very important so you don't end up throwing away a receiver. And a lot of people probably don't know this. Now check this out. Once I turn on both transmitters, I'm going to start with the S bus first. We see we got our S bus signal and now the I bus as well. So now we have both of them turned on. This is a live feed right now. So if I went ahead and turned off both transmitters right now, the signal will still go through, but it'll be blinked out with the fail safe flag inside each of these signals. So that could be useful for someone in the future. And this is why I really wanted to cover it. So now let's take a closer look at the S bus signal real quick. So the D8 protocol is faster than the D16 protocol. And why is that? Right now, I'm not going to be able to show you here, but I've done that in a previous video, which I'll have linked down below. It's a pretty old video that I'm planning on revisiting most of these things right here. Now, right now, we're looking at a live S bus signal right here. And if I were to move the yaw axes, you could see those move right there. Now I'm going to move the throttle here 
And you can see, you know, you know how it's usually channels one through four are yaw, pinch, and roll. So you can actually see that right now I'm using, I'm moving all of the sticks. So you can see that's the area of channels one, two, and three, and four in this area right here. Now that doesn't really matter. Now let's discuss D8 and D16. Even though D8 now is basically unsupported and is going to disappear in the upcoming future. Now, we used to say D8 is faster. And in, in reality, D16 and D8 are, are sending exactly the same time. But when you set the RC transmitter on the old D16, what happens is, even though it's the same speed, what goes on is, is it sends the full 16 channels in two packets. So instead of all of them being here, they're still all here. What it does is, it'll send in the first packet, for example, these two right now. In this one, it'll send the first eight channels, and then the other ones would be frozen to the previous value. And then in the second packet here, it'll send the, the uh, 8 through 16 channels and freeze the 1 through 8 from this packet right here. So that's what it was doing here. And what we want to do in future videos, if this video gets enough attraction, this is where I wanted to do this video, I want to actually compare that to see if the access protocol did bring in some actual benefits into this. Now, I forgot the latency for the SBUS, but again, I'll have that video linked down below. I really went into super detail on that video. Now, let's bring in the iBus signal. So the iBus was really fast. It was way faster than SBus, and we still need to get Crossfire tested. Now, uh, previously I did the Crossfire, but it wasn't really that great because I think I was actually just testing the PPM. But we're going to be testing the actual Crossfire uh, latency compared to SBus as well as iBus. And it's going to take some time because I have to take a couple uh, RC transmitters apart in order to do that correctly and to have perfect results and to have a consistent testing setup, basically, like I've done before. But I'm going to do it slightly better this time because I got more experience now. So let's talk about iBus. iBus is sending everything in every packet, which is really great. I think it was uh, the latency was around 25 milliseconds, if I remember correctly, or 10 milliseconds for those cheap FlySky iBus receiver transmitters, which was crazy. Horus was like in the 40s. The QX7 was also in like 30, 40s, I remember, milliseconds. So we did have some latency in that perspective. Now, if we take a look at the iBus, the iBus is slightly faster and then just slightly faster in the amount of packets it sends per a specific amount of time. So for a full packet to be sent from an iBus signal here, so right now what we're looking at is the iBus signal. So from here to here, let's just consider this as one packet of information. It's going to take 7.64 milliseconds. Now, if we just move these exact 7.64 milliseconds together and we move it to the iBus, or the SBus, sorry, which is in yellow right here, we see that the iBus is slightly faster as well. So if we move here, we'll see that the SBus actually sends one packet of information every nine milliseconds. So the iBus is one millisecond faster, 1.4 millisecond faster in descending the frame. So the frequency as it's sending the frames is much faster, well, not much faster, slightly faster. However, where we want to test the latency wouldn't be in the amount of packets we're sending every milliseconds because this isn't that much of a big difference, one millisecond here. The What you want to see is from the point of input on the RC transmitter to the point that it was received on the receiver, uh, that's how you want to test latency. Because for example, let's just say you armed the quadcopter and from the point you clicked it, uh, we want to see how long it takes to process that through the microcontroller unit that's inside the RC transmitter first and then it broadcasts it out into the receiver and when the receiver processes it and then sends it out into the signal that we'll be able to read here, then we'll know what is the actual latency. But what I wanted to show you today is just discuss a couple things with you. Also, the future videos of what is to be expected, which are the access protocol versus the older SMS protocol to see the actual differences, if there are any benefits, if it's even slower than before. And I really would like the input on that to know if I should proceed with those, because if it's just going to get like two, three hundred views, I, I don't think it's really that worth it. But like I said, I, I feel like you're, the community has matured quite a lot. And um, I think you guys are really interested into seeing these stuff in more detail. Obviously, those videos would be in more and more detail here. And here we can see the 16 channels actually being outputted. Same thing for the iBus. iBus, I think, is also 16 channels, if I remember correctly. 16 or 14 channels. It doesn't really matter right now. All right, guys. Well, that's concluded for this video, guys. Come join my Patreon. I have a ton of giveaways this month, even new Patreons. I think I have like seven this month. They get like their own special giveaway or two giveaways, premium giveaways. You also get access to my secret shop. 
And you also get buy two, get any other shirt for free on my shop if you're my Patreon. And you get access to all of my open hardware schematic files, such as the open hardware ESC, open hardware flight controller, which you can design, modify, and do as you please with, and even sell if you ever got to that uh, stage. So I don't mind. That's all for you. It's all up for grabs. And, well, that's it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.